Hey fellas and fellow rats, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at the Ranchero. Before we have a look at what needs to do in this year though, let's have a brief reminder of all the stuff that we did to it last year. Now if you haven't already seen the previous videos that were filmed on this one last year, um, when I got it, this inner headlight here, this yellow one, wasn't working. So I did the right thing and I bought a pair of used high beam lamps obviously in yellow uh, we'll put those in got those working so now all four headlights do work and that's featured in one of the previous videos now if you haven't seen that one as yet i'll leave a link to that at the end of this video so you can have a look at that one one of the other things we did under the bonnet here now when i got the truck it was running it was driving i uh, drove it around for a couple of months before i started filming it and then all of a sudden it stopped working it just wouldn't start it was completely dead uh, I thought initially that it could have been this here, the starter relay. So bought a new starter relay, replaced that. Uh, turned out that wasn't the case and actually fried that relay. So this is the old one that's now back on, connected up properly. I do have a spare one just in case. I did buy another one. Um, so that's what we did under the bonnet. Now the next thing we did, this door lock wasn't working. So we took the door apart. Uh, that's one of the more recent ones. We took the door apart completely, took the door uh, the door lock out on the other side of the door panel, put the new lock in. I uh, also took the opportunity to replace the window winder with a new one because that plastic bit there was missing. And behind that speaker grill fitted a new, a new speaker, which you can just see poking through there. And then we'll put the door card back on. Now this is the original door card that's gone back on. Uh, if you want to see the process that was involved in stripping the door down again that's in one of the videos so now that you're all up to date with what happened last year let's have a look at what i would like to do what i'm going to try and get through this year now as i've mentioned before this one is powered by a 351 cleveland as far as i'm aware it's completely factory standard uh, nothing's been changed on it nothing's been upgraded on it with it being a 1975 model though it does have all the emissions bump still attached to it so i'm going to be looking to take all of that off we don't need none of that uh, we're down there at the bottom of the engine i don't know if you can see just down there where my finger is there's that pulley there that belongs to the smog pump which is totally seized it's not connected there's no belt on it uh, the pipe that comes off the back of it is just hanging down there so that's not connected that's doing absolutely nothing so i'm going to see if i can find a way to remove all the emissions bits and pieces that no longer is needed and try and work out what that is that looks like a giant tin of tuna. I've got no idea what that is, I know it's something to do with emissions but if anybody knows what that is, uh, comment below, leave a comment below with regards to it and uh, what it's for, what it does and we'll see if we can get that removed and then just bypass it all and work through it that way. Now the other thing that I would like to remove on here is this monstrosity here. Now this is the aircon system. It's connected, it still works. I don't know if it works inside the truck though because there's um, the controls for the heater and the air conditioning and the demisters, they actually don't work at the moment. So presently, there's no heater running, there's no demisters running. So that's something that needs looking at. It may well just be that the sliders are stuck in that position because they haven't been used for so long. Well, we'll pull that apart, we'll have a look at that. And then the only other thing underneath here that stands out is this plastic bottle here which is the overflow for the radiator it's currently being used as the overflow for the radiator it is though a genuine american mug bottle so i'm thinking of moving it and putting something else in its place i'm also debating the possibility of leaving it where it is with it being american no i'll probably move it and put something else there and then obviously general servicing plugs points leads etc this fuel filter which is absolutely filthy uh, that needs change and that needs taken care of the other thing i'd like to do is to get rid of these purple valve covers whether i'll repaint them blue or black or get some polished ones I haven't quite decided at the moment but the purple does somewhat clash with the original blue of the air filter which may well be coming off and getting changed for a more breathable air filter as it is so that's what i'm planning on doing or hoping to get done this year under the bonnet of the ranchero let's have a look inside and see if there's anything in there that needs doing 
Now the first thing you can see straight away inside is there's a split in the seat cushion and the seat back on the uh, passenger side of the car. So we need to get that looked at. Um, not sure it's going to be the best way to fix that. But we'll worry about that later. We'll get that fixed. Now, jumping in, what you can see straight away, there's cracks in the dash pad, quite a lot of cracks in the dash pad. They go all the way along. And that's obviously just your normal wear and tear. I do know that these dash pads can come off. They are easily replaceable. So we're looking at the possibility of getting that done. Uh, there's a fault with the glove box. Uh, it doesn't actually open at the minute. And when you do get it open, it doesn't actually shut not fully and not easily so that needs looking at i think the lock mechanism just needs a bit of adjustment on it so we'll see if we can get into that this year as well now the dashboard all of the gauges work on the dashboard i know highly unusual for an old american car over here oh with the exception of the clock uh the clock doesn't work so need to have a look at the clock and the only other thing on the dashboard that has an issue at the moment is there's no lights so none of the lights on the dashboard are working so I need to check into that and see what's causing that. The steering wheel itself has a crack in, is it plastic, Bakelite, whatever that is, that's cracked in that point there with the chunk missing. And it's also got a crack down here. So that needs looking at. The radio works, but it's only on tapes. Um, the tapes do work, or the tape deck side of it does work. The windscreen wipers and windscreen washers, they work, as I said. The demister controls there, um, they appear to be frozen, so they're not actually moving at all at the moment. The windscreen wipers, however, are working. And then down here, where you would normally find your hood pull in order to open the hood, that's just non-existent. So that needs replacing. That little courtesy light you can see there, uh, where are we? There we are. That works. Uh, there's not a bulb in the passenger side one, so we need to stick a bulb in there. And hopefully that should work as well. And the door card on the captain's side is a bit battered around the pull handle. So we need to investigate that. There's a chunk missing there, one of the covers from the screws. So we need to have a look at that and see if there's anything we do with that. Possibly replace the door card or find a way of repairing that. The bolster side of the captain's seat is a bit worn. So that's to look into. And then uh, looking over the top of one. As you can see, the headlining has one or two issues, uh, as well as condensation and dampness. Not too concerned about that at the moment, but obviously it's something else that needs repairing or looking at inside the car. All this condensation, uh, condensation on the window, incidentally, it's all uh, it's all outside. There's none of it inside, so it's all nice and dry inside, apart from a little bit of condensation on the headliner. Take it outside and let's have a look around the back end of the truck. Now the pickup bed itself, that looks a lot worse on camera than it is in reality. All of these rust marks you can see, uh, that's just surface rust. There's no actual rot in the bed at all. It does need a clean out and it will be getting treated on the spots where there is rust. And I'll reseal around any seams to prevent any leaks. There's nothing leaking at the moment, but obviously we want to keep it that way. So that'll be getting treated for the rust and then painted once it's all cleaned and dried. Uh, the same with the back window. At the, at the moment, the back window doesn't leak. And uh, again, that condensation's on the outside. Uh, so there's no actual leaks into the cab as yet. But what I'll do is I'll reseal everything and make sure everything's nice and uh, clean and tidy before I paint it. And then I do have a roll bar to fit in. Now the roll bar will bolt in down in this corner. It'll come up the side and then it sits just a couple of inches above the top of the window so it'll sit about that high just across the top of the back of the roof and then the legs of the roll bar stretch all the way down to that far corner over there or just behind the wheel arch so that uh, give it a bit more presence in the back and the tailgate does work so no problems with the tailgate and on the outside of the tailgate there is a little bit of a dent just there and get the light in the right place you'll be able to there we are, you can see that, so that needs taken care of, that's nice and easy to do. The, um, on these, the inner panel of the tailgate actually unscrews and comes off, so you can see on the screws there. And that gives you access to the inside of it, so that can be 
battered out. Now at the back of the truck, other than the dent in the tailgate, got a little bit of surface rust coming up on the bumper. So that's to be cleaned off. I'll get that all cleaned off at some point this year. And the exhausts, which are incredibly small, need to be bigger and need to be louder. So we'll get into that and we'll get that taken care of. I'm unsure as to where I'm going to put the new exhausts, uh, obviously a pair of them. I don't know whether they're going to be behind the wheels or in front of the wheels, but there is new, uh, new exhausts are going to go on as well. And speaking of wheels, these are the wheels that it came with. Now these are horrible. I don't like these. They stick in to the arches or they sit inside the arches far too much. If you look from above, they're pretty much swallowed up by the arches. They do appear to be some sort of fake BBS type wheel. Uh, they are a standard American Ford fitment on a, on a five stud. Uh, if you want these wheels, or if you know anybody looking for a, a set of wheels and you like the looks of these, then by all means leave a comment below, get in touch with us at 00garage at gmail.com. They will be up for sale when I get some new wheels sorted and uh, we'll do some of that. They will also fit British five stud Fords, but you will need a spigot ring to go around the inside of the hub because they're bigger on an American uh, wheel or an American axle hub than they are on, uh, on an English axle hub. Now the rest of the truck is nice and solid. There's no rust anywhere. Uh, there is, as you can see, there's, there's no rust down the side of it. It's all nice and solid. It needs a good clean, uh, but it's all nice and solid. Well, with the exception of that patch there. But uh, that's just the paint flaking off. So we'll get that looked at as well. It's solid underneath. Uh, there's no rust to any major parts underneath it. Uh, right underneath on the captain side, there is a bit of a crack in the floorboards, but we'll get that seen to and get that looked at at some point. For now, I'm just going to pretend I haven't seen that. Uh, of course, the front bumper is a bit of a mess. Whereas the chrome has actually peeled off, or is peeling off on the front bumper. I don't think there's an awful lot I can do with polishing that out. So we may just put some of the shine juice on there and get, leave that the way it is. I have no intention of painting it at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna leave it the way it is with the patina. Also on the top of the hood. It's uh, fairly well patinaed up. Doesn't look too bad at the moment because it's wet from sitting overnight. But uh, down there you can see on the, on the sides of the bonnet, some kind of uh, growth there. I'll get rid of that. Now you can see on the sides of the bonnet, it's uh, it's pretty much burnt through the lacquer, burnt through the paint over in the States, and there's a bit of lacquer peel going on in the wing here. But we're just going to ignore that and leave it as it is. We did have a new windscreen fitted when I first got it. Uh, that wasn't filmed though because it wasn't done here, it was done elsewhere. So that's pretty much it for the Ranchero. Now this is the second one of these I've owned, so I do have one or two spares kicking about for it. From the previous one I had. Um, here's a photo. This one I actually owned from 1991 all the way through to 2009 and uh, regret very much getting rid of that one which is why I bought this one and this one turned up. Now the previous one that I had this is a 1975 hence all the emission stuff under the bonnet. The previous one that I had was a 1973 as you can see in the photograph, the different design of the grille. And the last one was a Ford Ranchero Squire, hence the wood panelling down the side, or what was left of the wood panelling down the side. This one, however, is a Ranchero 500. So, the sun's affecting everything there. The sun's a bit bright today. And yes, I know the bonnet's a bit crooked when it's not closed properly. But we'll worry about that later. I just want to pretend that uh, that's sitting perfectly flat for now. And that's the Ranchero updated. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. That way YouTube will notify you of any more videos that I put up and they'll share it to more people, which will help the, the channel grow, which will support me in getting more work done and uh, keeping the projects going so you can enjoy the content. Now, if you haven't seen in the previous videos so far, I will leave a link to the playlist just here so you can watch those and you can catch up with those ones. Thanks for watching. 
See you next time. Bye for now.